Hey everybody, welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Choosing Beggar Reddit video. If you want your daily dose of Reddit stories that aren't text-to-speech, then now's the time to subscribe and click on notifications. In our first story, a Choosing Beggar mother is not satisfied with the quality or the quantity of candy given to her son. Let's jump right in. My story summarizes why I never wanted to be a teacher, but life had other plans. I teach kids of junior high, equivalent of 7th to 9th grade, as an assistant. Basically, they do their maths and science with me, and I help out with questions or study with them when they have exams. Because of the nature of this, I am in a class with many kids, five under my supervision, seven more under another teacher, who are in different grades, studying different subjects at the same time. What does this mean? Simple. This classroom has never known true silence. A few days ago, I had an epiphany. Those are young kids, 13 to 16 years old. And what do kids like? Candy! So I bought a bag of mini chocolates or wafers and came up with a bribe system. Solve one piece of homework equals one piece of candy. Same for learning two paragraphs of biology or geography. If you were too loud, you would have to do 50% more to get the candy. It was easy money, or candy, so I didn't hear a lot of complaining. I even brought some extra and gave them to the kids that were not under my supervision because, well, it's not nice that the kids next to you get candy and you don't. A few minutes in, I realized it wasn't a great idea. One of the kids kept being loud and refused to do the extra 50% to earn his second piece, so I didn't give him any. He was super pissed off, so I left one with his next teacher and left it in her discretion to either give it by the end of the class or not, but never asked what came of it. Fast forward to earlier today. We are giving feedback to the parents. Little Witch's mom comes in and asks about the spawn. I give some honest feedback, smart kid but doesn't listen to me. She asks if I were the one that gave the candy the other day. The conversation was pretty much as follows. Little Witch really liked the idea of the reward, but he didn't get his second one. Oh yeah, I left his second candy with Miss X and asked her to decide. But why? He did the task. Well, he was disruptive, so I asked that he do some extra work, but he refused to do it. Mind you, the extra work would have been seven minutes of his time tops. That doesn't sound fair at all. All the other kids got a second piece. Well, they completed their assignments and kept quiet. Well, he really wanted one. By this time, a lot of parents were gathered there and I was pretty much done. I said that if he wanted it so much, he can have one if he apologized for being loud in class and take out a candy from my bag. I kept the leftovers for a treat to myself. And let me tell you, I did not expect this reaction. Seriously? An inexpensive brand of candy? That's what the big deal was about? How much did that even cost? That little witch couldn't have one more? Ma'am, it's not about the cost. It was a system to keep the kids quiet and eager to do their homework. I just picked it up on my way to be nice. Little Witch doesn't even like this. You should be getting them more expensive candy instead, as yours is not even good for them. As if hers were not made of sugar. It was one piece of candy, and it's not like I do it regularly. Besides, I bought these, not the school. After that, she made sure to let me know that I was feeding the kids garbage. She kept the candy, by the way, and I should be more responsible to not be unfair or discriminatory. I said thank you for your feedback, and she seemed offended. I think she went to talk to my boss after that. The next mom seemed a bit baffled and had a good luck dealing with her look when she started talking to me. Story number two shows us a choosing beggar who lies about the work he needs done on his garden. So for some background, first of all, I mow lawns around my neighborhood for some extra cash and have been since the fall of 2018. 
This is because I'm a teenager now going into senior year and I wanted money to buy video games and pay for dates and hangouts with my girlfriend. This story takes place last year when I was 15 in 10th grade. So I used to mow this guy's lawn for the months he lived here because he was right across the street from my other client and more money is always welcome. One day he texted me asking if I could help him out and come mow his backyard as he was planning on selling his house and moving out. I asked him to clarify that he meant only mowing as I've seen houses with crazy amounts of weeds in their backyards and that's not my area of expertise. I make lawns look nice and tidy and shape hedges on occasion. He said yes and I agreed to do it for $15 as I wasn't short on money and thought it would be a quick deal. I get there with my dad, I wasn't old enough to drive yet, and he says he'll be there waiting so we can get it over with quick and get on with our day. I was feeling pretty good and ready to make a little bit of cash for some food. I walk into his backyard and it was completely overgrown. Not with grass though, there was no grass in sight actually. Instead, there were weeds up to my belly button covering the yard. I was really confused but I usually hate confrontation. I told the guy that this was really odd, I thought he meant grass. He then assured me that it would be easy and told me to get to work so I did exactly what he paid me to do. I mowed his backyard after cutting the weeds to a height that was mowable. I thought my job was done as I did what he paid me to do. He on the other hand did not. He told me that I should pick up all the scrappings of weeds that were left over after shortening the forest. I explained to him that he wasn't paying me to do that and it would take too much time out of my day. He then again assured me that it would be easy and got his elderly father to demonstrate how to clean it up. I walked back to my car to talk to my dad and ask him what to do as I was frustrated and completely surprised. The guy then comes walking to me and says something along the lines of, if you're just going to leave like that in the middle of the work, I won't pay you full price. At this point I was done, so I accepted being paid $10 and he passively aggressively told me that he'd recommend me to anyone who wanted to buy the house. I never talked to him again even though it took a while for his house to sell. I learned from that and I haven't made the same mistake since. Story number 3 gives us a choosing beggar who is not satisfied with a daily free lunch offer. The worst kind of choosing beggar is the one who doesn't ask before taking more than is offered. These cases are rarely posted because they have no amusing dialogue. These are people who simply accept an offer of Christian charity and then totally screw over their benefactor. Probably ought to be a subreddit called let no good deed go unpunished, but apparently there isn't so I thought I would share this here. By the way, Boomer here. When I was growing up our town had a cafe where everyone ate, with people often sitting at a large community table. One day in the early 1980s, we were eating and Billy joined us. Billy was a nice guy but a little off because of a childhood injury. He had trouble holding a job. He would repeat any story he heard and cite who and where he heard it from, which kind of put a crimp in the conversation if you were telling something you didn't want repeated. Billy's parents had been among the wealthiest people in town when they married, each inheriting thousands of acres of land. When crops were good, they lived high. In bad years, they lived high and sold a little land to cover their expenses. By the time Billy was born, they had sold most of the land and Billy grew up in destitution. I live in a small town and everyone knows everyone. Billy was probably 40 when this happened. He was only able to do odd jobs and lived with an aunt whose house had just suffered a major kitchen fire. My father asked Billy at lunch one day what he was going to do since his aunt's house burned and Billy said he was going to continue to live in the house but that his aunt had moved in with a sister. I can still hear my father's voice now. Billy, the weather is getting cold outside and you aren't going to be able to find work. And if your aunt's not there, then there won't be anybody to cook for you. 
So you just come up here to the cafe every day through the end of the winter and charge your lunch to me. That way you'll at least have one hot meal a day. My father admonished Billy that the offer was limited to lunch only, one meal a day. Ten days later, it was the end of the month and time for my dad to settle his account. Billy had come in every day for lunch, also breakfast, also a late afternoon snack before the 4 p.m. cafe closing time. My father saw Billy the next day and told him the deal was lunch only and that he wasn't going to cut off his charging privileges, but if he charged more than one meal a day, the deal was off. I'm sure you gentle reader can guess what happened next. 30 more days passed and it was once again time to settle up his tab. Not only had Billy managed to sign the ticket for three meals a day at the cafe, but he had taken to treating his friends. In fact, at breakfast he picked up the tab for the large community table a few times. Needless to say, that was the end of Billy's free lunch, which is sad for him because if he had simply accepted what was offered, he would likely have had a free lunch for life. In our final story, a choosing beggar posts a bad review, and then we find out what really happened. Very unfriendly seller. The quality is not good. She's rude, and she makes rings in different sizes. Even I told her to make them in one size. They don't fit, and she thinks she's never wrong. That's not how you should run a business. I have gone out of my way to help you with four different orders. Your boyfriend ordered you a ring and you contacted me that he ordered the wrong size. I offered to remake the ring for free with the understanding you returned the original ring. You did not want him to know, so that was done. You still have the new ring and I assume you love it and are wearing it as that is what you stated. Then you wanted a completely custom band. I had to order custom stones. Then you wanted a refund because you broke up when I already started the ring. I refunded. Then you got back together and wanted the band again. I agreed with the understanding written in the listing as well that it was not refundable and cannot be exchanged as it was custom. This was made to the exact size you ordered as I made sure. I am kind and I went out of my way to help you. This has been John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more of them, then hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.